Hey out there, thanks for tuning in. I haven't done a video in front of the whiteboards in like a month. Been out on the job. Feels good. I got quite a few things going on in the real estate world, and I think they're interesting subjects. You let me know. Hit the like or hit the don't like. Don't hit the don't like. Hit the like. Oh, check out the shirt I got. Buy, flip, sell, repeat. From my daughter. So when I got a bunch of things going on, offers going out, offers coming in, looking at other properties, like I get into like hyper mode. Like I'm always in real estate mode when I'm driving around the neighborhood, I'm looking at houses, what could be done to that, I wonder if that's vacant, stuff like that. But then once I got offers going out and I got the Hasler Cottage on the market, offers coming in, it's exciting, it gets me pumped. So let me tell you about a couple of these. I don't think I ever showed you guys the inside of the neighbor's house from where we live. The neighbor passed away, went into like this executor was going to be selling it. It went live on the market. I went through the listing agent in order to make the offer as attractive as possible. We put an offer in at full price, no contingencies, 325000 Got outbid. However, we're the only backup offer. I wound up going up $10,000. I really don't want to, but I really want the house. So I didn't want to lose it just for $10,000. So we went up to three thirty-five. dollars Side notes. The agent, I'm going directly through the listing agent and nothing for nothing, but I was not feeling the love coming back. Like she's going to double end the deal, which means she could make 5% or, you know, she could make 3 or 4% and they kick the sellers back the savings to make the offer even more attractive. And I wasn't getting like the responses. I don't know. Maybe I'm an ultra sensitive guy. I don't think I am. But if I was on, if I was on that side and I was her and somebody handed me this, like on a silver planner, I'd be contacting me. Anyway, so we're the only backup offer. So if something happens with that, we'll get it. The nice thing is that the accepted offer that's on the house, it's it, it comes along with a conventional mortgage, a small one. And I don't know if that house is going to qualify for conventional financing. So I'll tell you more about that in the future. So I think I made a video a couple days ago saying that I took an offer on the Hazlitt Cottage. Well, yesterday I get an email from the lawyer. It's, it's an attorney review. Buyer terminates it. It's not the first time this has happened and it wasn't like that big of a blow. Like it's happened before. So the buyer got cold feet, terminated the contract. Last night, I got another offer in on the property. This is exciting stuff. Can you see why I get like it's a hyper mode? So we got a second offer that came in and it's already an attorney review. I sent the contract over to the attorney today. I spoke to the agent that's gonna be handling the buyer. And there's a couple things in there that could throw a wrench in there. The buyer on that property is using a tactic that I'm a big fan of and that's getting a concession from the seller. A concession, if you're not familiar with it, is where the seller is going to accept a price on a piece of property, but out of that price, they're going to be giving back to the buyer. In this case, they're going to be coming in with an FHA loan. They're going to come up with their down payment money. And then I said that I would pay all their closing costs and escrows and things like that. I'm a big fan of that. Less money out of pocket. Now, they came in above list price, which was great. However, the problem that you have there if you're a seller, and it's not necessarily a problem, but the appraisal is going to have to come in at the higher price in order for it to all go through. And if not, then we're going to have to renegotiate some things, the amount of money that I would pay towards closing costs and things like that. However, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. This is good stuff. Above list price, people are still showing a house. I think so far I have 60 confirmed showings over there. So this is all going great. I made a quick video yesterday on a Kingsburg house. I got to the, I got to go on the inside of the house, took a look at it, made a quick video about what I think the ARV would be, uh, what the asking price is, how much the rehab is, and stuff like that. And I'm not saying I'm all that, but this is the speed that I think you need to operate in today's market. Because I don't know if you know, but it's a seller's market. So I already ordered my proof of funds letter that comes over from my hard money lender. I already put a letter together to the seller. And I'm going to have my broker submit the offer for me in one of my LLCs. So yesterday I took a look at it. Today I'm going to put the offer in. 
and hopefully we'll hear more about that within a day or two. I've made quite a few videos where I mentioned Tom and Rose. Tom, the contractor on the Brown House, which is coming along nicely. I went down there today, did some of the landscaping. One of Tom's guys are down there starting the exterior. I don't like to be in these guys' way. And he sometimes comes out and he wants to chit-chat about different things on the in exterior. And I think that's a great idea. But I'd rather leave him alone so he could do his stuff. Expert carpenter. But anyway, listen, so Tom had this lead on another house down in Freehold. Him and I are going to check out the interior tomorrow. That house is a little bit higher than what I usually like to go to buy. It's in the 300s. So that means the ARV has to justify a purchase price like that. Now, I'm not stuck on buying houses between 100 and 200,000. I'm not. However, I have to take into consideration the carrying costs when you get above $300,000 on one of these fixer uppers. Now the carrying costs are much higher. So every month that goes by, it's digging into your profit. So if you don't have that big of a profit margin to start with, if an extra month or two goes by and you don't sell that house, you're going to feel it. When the buyer terminated that agreement yesterday, the contract on the cottage place, it didn't sting as much as it did when I was first getting into this business. And the reason why is because I made videos about this, trying to come up with multiple exit strategies. I'm not in a desperate position as far as I have to sell that property. I could just rent it out. However, make no mistake, I would love to sell it. I'd love to get the can I'd love to get out of that property. I'd love to put cash in my pocket to be able to move on to another investment. However, the sting wasn't there because if worse came to worse, I'd rent it out and I'd make a couple bucks each month. I'm saying that to you guys because depending on the situation that you're in, whether you're buying or selling, it's it's a much stronger place to be when you're not desperate. The house in Kingsburg that I'm putting an offer in on, my broker had a house listed right next door. It's a much nicer house. It's a much bigger house. Well, it was off the market. It was contingent. It was under contract for like two months. And all of a sudden, it's back on the market. So I talked to him this morning. I said, what happened? So the buyer had a judgment, an $8,000 judgment that he refused to, I guess, pay off. So he couldn't qualify for the mortgage. That house sat off the market for like... 75 days as a result of that and now it's back on the market I'm bringing that up because if I'm going in to buy a piece of property I'm not in love and stuck on that piece of property I could walk from it it's not gonna sting that much if I'm selling a piece of property and a buyer backs out I've been through it before and it doesn't sting so much when I just that that situation I just described to you I didn't say it to my broker but I'm thinking to myself if I was the sellers and that was truly the only reason why that buyer wasn't going to complete that transaction, I think the salesperson in that house was like 400000 It's a much bigger house than the one I would have put an offer on. I would have been like, hey, listen, buyer buddy, I'll give you $4,000 in order to settle that debt, in order to close. Because the, the sellers on that house, they already moved out and they're in their new house. So now they got two mortgages going on. Here's the bottom line. Flexibility. If you're flexible, I think you'll have a lot more success buying and selling property. I'll tell you what happens with the Kingsburg property. 